and welcome to Exploring Nature's Families. My name is Carissa, and as a science teacher and marine scientist, I love to introduce others to the wonders of the natural world around us. I'll be your guide and learning partner as we look deep into the secrets of one of my favorite habitats, the estuary. Our six-part video series will take us on a journey into the amazing world of an estuary. Along the way, we'll discover many plants and animals, living things just like us that depend on each other and the estuary to live and raise their families, our wild relatives. Are you ready to solve the mystery of what makes the estuary such an incredible place to live? Let's get started. For both scientists and explorers, the first step in every journey is knowing where you are. Right now, I'm standing next to the Salmon River, only one mile from the Pacific Ocean. Some of the fresh water in this river fell as rain over 30 miles from here, high in the coastal mountain range to the east. The water then flowed down hillsides, across fields, and through valleys until it finally reached this place where it mixes with the salty waters of the Pacific Ocean. This special place where the waters of the land and the sea meet is called an estuary. Okay, so we're in the Salmon River estuary. Great, where's that? Let's look at a map. Scientists, just like explorers, use maps to help us understand the places we study. Here we are, right here, tucked up against Cascade Head near Lincoln City, Oregon. Let's imagine we're traveling to the east, where the sun comes up. It would take us over a week driving over land by car before we'd finally see the Atlantic Ocean on the other side of the United States. Now imagine traveling to the west, where the sun sets. It would take us several weeks traveling over the water before we would finally see land on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. Here in the middle, where we are, is our estuary. And then, if we travel to the north, towards the North Pole, the weather gets much colder. And when we travel to the south, the weather gets warmer until we reach the middle of the Earth, a point called the equator. If we continue to travel further south, it will get colder again as we get closer to the South Pole. The Salmon River estuary is exactly halfway between the icy cold of the North Pole and the blazing heat of the equator. The temperature and climate are our first clues to what makes this estuary such a good home, its location. So what other clues can we find? Earlier I mentioned the rain from the coastal mountains and how it travels to this place, but we also get a lot of rain right here. Get this, in the last year, over 10 feet of rain fell right where I'm standing. That's about as high as this stick. With all that rain, what do you think this water would taste like? Is it fresh, like the water you drink, or salty, like the water in the ocean? If you said fresh, that's a great guess, since the rain and the river are both sources of fresh water. But it's actually kind of salty. Weird, <laughs> what might cause it to be salty? Remember we started our journey only a mile from the Pacific Ocean. The incoming tide carries the salty water up the river. This mix of fresh and salt water, called brackish water, is our next clue to the mystery of what makes the estuary such an amazing place to live. Because it is a mix of water from the river and the ocean, brackish water holds food and nutrients from both of them. All this extra food and nutrients is one of the reasons so many plants and animals make their homes here. Food and water are two of the things living beings need to survive. Since the estuary is where the river and ocean meet, let's go look at the ocean. Maybe it will help us find more clues. Yikes, the ocean can be a dangerous place full of rough waves, strong winds, and hungry predators. So how does that compare to the estuary? Here the water is much calmer. The trees and land help block the wind, and the plants provide a lot of places to hide. 
The safety the estuary provides is another clue to why so many creatures have decided to make their homes here. So far we've uncovered several clues to what makes the estuary such a great place to live, like its location and its ability to provide food and safety. But we've only begun to discover the secrets of the estuary. In upcoming episodes, our journey will take us deeper into the lives of our wild relatives who live here as we discover how they're connected to each other, the estuary, and even to us. I can't wait for the next part of our adventure in the estuary. See you soon.